It's casual, not formal. It's hosted by Rory Pendlin. Oh, and Renee in tow. It's time to start the show. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Welcome to uh, season three of It's Casual. We're back. Uh, let me bring up Renee Jaworski. Did you almost say cadets? I wanted to say cadets. I wanted to say, hello, cadets. We're here, cadets. Here's the cadets. There's no it's cadets. Been, it's I'm been looking. that way for a while. Yeah, There's months no now. Cadets. Just, we have, every, um... every, every show was a, was a general howitzer show. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and uh, Millie Hazard. <laughs> she's she's amazing and you know i've heard that she's on assignment until thursday so she'll be back thursday but she's hunting <laughs> yeti or sasquatch or champ or ogo pogo or some you know she does all kinds of shit she's amazing chupacabra chupacabra <laughs> you know she's on the she's on the government lab bike says she's doing the show did you see that she's got like a the the, the gym the government lab gym behind her sometimes sometimes she's in the lab what is this woman she has about what do you got behind you there what what is that there's all kind. This is a fucking mansion, is what it is. That's what it is. I'm living large, buddy. What the fuck? Why are you asking me that? It's so obvious that this is it's a fucking. It's a mansion. mansion. Okay. Millie Hazard doesn't roll like this because she has a government paycheck. You know, she she rolls a little bit lower than the rest of us, but she's a lot brighter than I am. So there's that. Well, you know, they they do say that gingers have more fun. <laughs> What happened was we were backstage and I was, a, I was a blondie, you know, and then I was like, you were. It. I was like, it's, it's casual. I got to do something fun. And I'm looking through the hair hats, looking through the hair hats, copyright Tardon, uh, Dennis Tardon in, invented that right hair hat. I'm looking and I'm like, there's purple, there's all kinds of shit in there. And then this was like, I looked, it was two minutes ago and I'm like, boom, red. Oh, so it didn't accident. go purple. I should have got purple, you know, but I was like, ah, purple no people. lass. I like Here. you as a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> you look great, Loss. I love it. Thank you. Thank you love very it. much. I appreciate that. So, Loss, we have, we I have a, Loss. We have a wonderful show. We have two two wonderful, lovely ladies coming on the show. Um, uh, both of them have their own special, specific talents. Uh, they have their own stories to tell. Um, I made a huge mistake. Uh, we were supposed to have a guest on this week, and they canceled at last minute. And uh, I was like, you know what? Pan's never been on the show. I asked Pan. And then, like, the day after I scheduled, I found out she was on Tom's show last night. Yeah, yeah she was. But she was no and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I booked her on my show, too. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to step on toes. Like, hey, man, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, That's actually, I feel like that was an actual dramatization that, that was dramatization of what happened but it was very accurate that was a hollywood rendition of what actually happened that voice was amazing. <laughs> he's our um, dennis hopper <laughs> yeah he is hey man yeah, don't is. sweat it man i love you you know i love you man i'll give you hugs all the time but i want to <laughs> say this is that we have you know not we but you know general howitzer and millie they do this show called you know big monster briefing room and mm -hmm. they have sometimes they'll do two training films in in one and we call it a uh, double creature feature yeah the creature feature. Well, we have a pan. It's a back to back. It's almost like yesterday and today because it's within 24 hours on Cosmos. Pan's been featured. So I feel like it's a double pan feature. You yeah, know? I'm not going to call it a double creature feature. Come she's on. She's not now. a creature. Well, I guess we're all creatures. <laughs> she's a lovely world, creature. But she's a lovely creature. Yes. And she's uh, backstage and we'll, right we'll now be, and I see her smiling, a beautiful smile. We'll, so. we'll be bringing her up uh, in a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to bring Alana Lang up. Um, and. Uh, uh, talk with her. Uh, she's she's somebody that that all of our inner circle they all know yeah. her. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, not everybody that watches this show might know her, so I'm going to ask her some questions that we know the answers to, but maybe they don't. So, right. yeah. Um, and, and we're going to bring her up to to talk with her and find out a little bit a little bit more about her and Bean. 
And Bean, <laughs> Bean is like, you know, this is, he, he, that's one of the bookings that we have here, right? Yeah, and I just want to say about Alana, she's mm-hmm. a multifaceted guest too. She's not just one mm-hmm. thing. You can talk and she, right. she'll, she'll say this. There are people who will have eight hour conversations with her. She, you could talk to her. Mm-hmm. I could talk to her for eight. You know, I could go to Mars with her and just hang out for three years and it would be fantastic. <laughs> she is an attorney. She is a show and live host. live off potatoes. Night. She knows I could live off potatoes with Alana Lang. It would be amazing. But anyways, let's bring her up. And Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt, don't talk. You know what I'm doing, right? I have to. I'm going to keep it together. Damon. I'm going to keep it together. Oh, stop. <laughs> because if I get a giggle fit, it's just going to be me laughing the whole fucking show. We don't want that. Let's bring Alana up. She's a voice of reason here. Okay. Here she comes. Beautiful Ilana Lang, everybody. There she Hi. is. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Great. Thank you so much for having me here. This is wonderful. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Again, we, we were trying to bring new people onto the show for this season. Uh, I'll be you. bringing some older folks back, too. You know, but... Um, but uh, Bean is there with you. I saw him uh, just before we started the show. So Bean just fell asleep. <laughs> uh- <laughs> She was so was excited about being on the show. And she she was so excited she, and she was jumping up and down and then she just went to sleep. But that's okay because, you know, she has a lot of jobs too. We both are very, uh, very multi-talented people. <laughs> I want to go Thank back. You, by the way. Yeah, I, I want to go back. Yeah, you uh, we we did some promo pictures for the posters for the show, and she was and, uh, in them. I, I had a couple of pictures that had Bean in, in, in them. Um, you have to have Bean in them. I so that that can I just apropos. can I just say one thing about her? Um, I want to give her some credit because she's my service dog, and mm-hmm. you can tell by my beautiful face today. Um, that I have a chronic illness. And so Bean has actually been there with me through everything. And so, you know, she, there's probably, if, if I'm in a picture, Bean's probably in a picture. <laughs> so. Well, and, and again, uh, you know, uh, everybody knows the situation uh, with my daughter and the depression. Now she has an emotional support cat. So, uh, yeah. I That's mean, wonderful. Animals animals do uh, bring cheer into our life. You know, they're, they're amazing. They become our family members. And, and again, they help. Some of them, some of them are service animals. Like you said, they help us. Uh, so that's a wonderful thing. And that kind of ties into something else. Uh, that you're into. Uh, I was I was going to say earlier, let's go back and talk about, you are a legal expert, am I right? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm an attorney, so yeah. I wouldn't say across the board, um, but there are, I have some areas that I do specialize in. But right, yes, and I that's am. what I was going to ask you. Could you tell us those areas, what, what sure. you specialize in? Um, so I was a criminal in a uh, criminal law for almost a decade. And that was my primary area of focus. And then um, I started to get sick. So I started working for a major law firm and I did some training for them. And I also worked on some large um, uh, class action lawsuits. Mm -hmm. And since I've been sick, I haven't been able to work um, full time. So I've been taking a lot of animal law classes. And um, I would say at this point, uh, that is probably an area of expertise. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to advocate for being to be my um, service dog, my psychiatrist mm-hmm. did not really understand what the difference was. Um, and you know, they, it's, it's a it's a difficult area. So I wanted to, you know, I took a number of classes and I did a lot of research to make sure because being an attorney, you know, I I want my service dog and me, when we go out, I want us to be able to educate people. And if anybody has any questions and especially she is technically my psychiatric service animal. And that is something that is a relatively new field. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there is a lot of people that don't know about it. And there are a lot of misconceptions, um, such as that she has to be wearing certain things. She's a cockapoo, you know, so she's about 
25 pounds. So it's very different than people's expectations. People normally think of service dogs right. as, you know, for the blind, when they think of um, psychiatric service dogs, they think of PTSD situations and all of those are accurate. Um, it's just, there's so many other things. Like you were saying, your daughter has an emotional support cat, you yeah. know, animals, like I, I firmly believe that I would not be alive right now if it wasn't for being so, um, and so she technically helps me with my anxiety, but my anxiety is I'm on a lot of anxiety medication because of the nature of my illnesses. And mm -hmm. I really, um, I mean, it's, I'm the only one that has survived what I have. So, I mean, it, it, it gets very difficult. It gets very um, emotionally challenging, very mentally mm -hmm. challenging. It's like a giant puzzle that I have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And I have um, my husband who works as a, in a troubleshooter capacity um, for a major company. And so he helps me a lot. Um, but mm -hmm. honestly, I, I don't think that I'd be able to do this with without her and so you know we we do get a lot of people coming up to us and saying because she goes to the grocery store wherever i go and they'll be like "Ooh, you have a dog in the grocery store and you know okay this is a time for us to educate people fortunately i look very approachable she <laughs> she and i look similar so um we both look i always say we kind of look like strawberry shortcake dolls if people remember they were like these mm -hmm. little dolls and they had a pet that they came with you know that's yeah, what we look that's like the pet. So, <laughs> well, yeah, so and in the movie uh 101 dalmatians they have the scene where the, he's watching the people with the dogs and they all look like the dogs when they're going right. by they all look mm -hmm. the same yeah so we're really approachable so it's a really um you know, good. It's good for me to know as much as I can, because since we are so approachable, people coming up to us, you know, we can talk about it. People want to pat her all the time. And, you know, we have to explain, like, she looks at me and she sits and she knows she's not allowed to be pat in that capacity because she has to take care of me. And, you know, it's, it's really nice. People don't jump to conclusions or get upset. People are like, oh, what's going on? And, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate that that's the position I'm in because I've spoken to other people. That's not their experience. They've had negative experiences. So right. do you um, have, um, can you speak a little bit about the physiological and the physical benefits of these support animals? Just generally, like I used to have a seizure disorder when I was younger and I had two dogs and me literally even just petting them would help with everything from my anxiety, my blood pressure, and then just like physically my heart rate would regulate. Um, my yes. brain just seemed to work better and I got better rest. So there's even a you know, physiological benefit, right? Not just an emotional benefit. So there, it, it would literally be <laughs> like, like you were saying, I could talk for eight hours. Like yeah, it would be a whole series. For eight hours. Um, <laughs> this so, is what you advocate. This is what you champion. You champion right. people who have service animals. And, and this yes. is what I wanted you to talk about. Yeah, at first. And, and I love this. I love this opportunity to discuss this um, because this is not something, I mean, I'm not going to ask somebody, can I be on your show and talk about, you know, being sick? And so I, I love that I have the opportunity to do that. So thank you both so much. Um, so I'm going to pinpoint the area of what Bean does for me so that we can <laughs> not make this be an eight hour session. Um, so the reason why Bean is technically my psychiatric service animal, and I use the word service animal because dogs and horses are the only um, animals under the Americans with Disabilities Act that are allowed to be service animals. They are able to do certain things like Bean has to go everywhere with me and she is allowed to go everywhere with me, which is why sometimes people will come up and say, you know, you can't have your dog in here. And, you know, yes, I can. I can have my dog every single place because pretty much what's happening, I, I think that the easiest way to explain it is that I'm a puzzle and there are pieces missing from my puzzle. And Bean has those pieces she's learned in her training, both from me 
and from we had a private trainer and then we also worked with animal friends of Pittsburgh um, she learned how to be those puzzle pieces that then make me able to do what I would be able to do if I wasn't ill. Um, I do have general anxiety disorder. So she, the reason why she started being my service animal is because I start, uh, please, you know, if, if there's any questions or whatever, please stop me. Um, I have something called trichotillomania. And what that means is you pull out your hair. So for me, um, probably based on what's the reason why I have it, a lot of people have it uh, for different reasons. I actually have it, mine stems from a physical problem, which is my illness. Um, mm -hmm. So some people, it's an emotional or a mental compulsion. For me, it's slightly different. But I will sit there and I will take um, tweezers and I have, this is a little difficult to talk about, but I have tools and I pull hair out of my legs. And so what she's supposed to do is that this releases for me personally, it releases endorphins to manage my pain because the pain is overwhelming with my um, chronic illnesses. And so she comes in the room when I'm doing this and she will actually just lay down. And if I can keep it under control, because I have talked to hospice and they have said that this is called grounding. So for me personally, it's something that is not self-harming. It's something that is helping me cope. The endorphins actually are helping me cope with the pain. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when I do it, it leads to panic attacks. So she will gauge what my anxiety level is. And she'll get, if I'm doing okay, then she'll leave the room because usually this happens in the middle of the night. She'll leave the room and she'll go to sleep. And she'll, you know, she'll ask me to make sure it's okay. And I'll say, you know, I'm in a good place. And then she'll do that. But she'll come back if I need her. Um, but if she senses that, it's going to lead to, you know, that my anxiety is increasing. She will actually move closer and closer to me. She's been trained to bring a toy to distract me. Um, you know, she'll actually even like take my hand and grab it if she has to. So she's helping me emotionally because she's keeping me from having a panic attack. You know, before I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed extremely late. And so I didn't know why I was doing it. And I actually thought I was self-harming. So I'm not having as many panic attacks now that I understand it. But in the beginning, um, I was getting panic attacks on a very regular basis from this. Um, so you she said she, took, she takes your hand. Does she take your hand in her mouth? No, she actually, she takes or with her, her paws. Yeah, she takes her paw and she'll go like this. Oh, wow. That's so yeah. Sweet. So, and again, this is all based on what my anxiety level is. So, it's really right. uh -huh. amazing. She's my first dog. I had a cat before. Um, my cat passed on, and then I just felt like I needed a dog. I, I just, Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's just something in me. And fortunately, I didn't know how sick I was. Fortunately, we, we went to adopt a dog. She came right up to me. I think she must have known that I needed her. We were training her to be a therapy dog, but then we realized how sick I was. So just to finish answering Renee's question, you know, from an emotional aspect, she will actually gauge my anxiety and she will stop me before it becomes a panic attack. If it does become a panic attack, then she will sit on my lap. You know, she'll actually give me kisses. She'll, you know, cuddle into me so that I can't move. Um, you know, sometimes I'll shake and she like calms me down, which would be similar to the seizures. Um, she helps me from a mental you know, in a, a mental capacity because she distracts me. And she also helps me from a physical capacity because for me personally, 
once I'm in that place where I'm getting the endorphins and the pain is being uh, resolved, um, I'm generally waiting for my medication to kick in so she can help me get through that hour or however long it takes. Because even though it's grounding and even though I've been told that for me it it is something that is necessary, you know, it still does a lot of damage. It's, it's not... Um, trichotillomania of any kind, you know, is still dangerous. I mean, you, you are putting yourself in a position where you're open to infections, you're open to, you know, cutting yourself or doing something wrong. So, I mean, the fact that she gauges it, you know, it, it also helps me be focused. I mean, I need to be very focused when I'm doing it and not start freaking out because then I'll just, you know, it, it's, it's not calculated if I'm having a panic attack. It's messy if I'm having a panic attack. So she can actually put it in a place where, um, you know, the endorphins are being released for me and I'm not taking it. I'm not so anxious while doing it that is actually destructive right yeah when you're in public and people do come up to you what's your elevator pitch sort of for service animals you might only have a minute to talk to somebody who's never heard any of this before what do you usually say to get the message across very quickly that service animals are needed in society it's it's a it's a difficult thing i personally i personally will sit and talk to people you know i'll tell them like she's my service animal under the Americans with Disabilities Act. I'm allowed to have her in here. And if people are belligerent or if people are inquisitive, you know, I actually carry on my phone five different, you know, the American with Disabilities Act. <laughs> there, you know, I have a law dictionary. I have literally like an entire folder so that depending on how somebody approaches me and, you know, how I can best handle the situation, um, you know, I've offered to sit down and read, you know, things with people. I, you know, I have, um, so I, I take, I take my time, you know, fortunately I'm in a position where I don't have to be in a hurry. I, re I haven't left, the, I don't leave the house on a very regular basis lately. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I do, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky that I, can spend the time with people. And again, it's very nice that she is very cute. So we don't really have the problem. You know, people want to come pet her more than people are like, get the dog out of my, mm -hmm. you know. Do you run into belligerent people? Stephen Shaw wants to know. Um, you know, yes. Yes, because people want to know why can you bring your dog and I can't? So that that's for me personally is belligerent. Um, but I do know people who have had, because they don't look like a strawberry shortcake set, you know, people come to us and they're like, oh, how cute, you know, let's go talk to them. Um, but I do know people who don't have that, uh, I don't know, facade who, I mean, people will yell and scream at them. I did have one woman come up to me. I was having lunch with my mom and my sister um, at Panera uh, a couple years ago. And one woman just came up and started screaming and yelling about how disgusting it is and, you know, bad manners and all the stuff. And I just looked at her and I, you know, I said, she's highly trained to be my service animal. I'm very ill. And she you know, allows me to be, to, to do what I need to get done. So I, I guess that would be mm -hmm. what I would say. And then again, I'm fortunate enough that people are more empathetic or sympathetic to, to me than, than they are belligerent. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just one more question. Greg Gannon sure. wanted to know, he said there's a fun area between service animal and emotional support animal, and he feels like folks get confused. So can you clarify maybe the difference? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that's very, very true. So especially because Bean is my psychiatric service animal, it does get 
difficult for people to be able to understand what the differences are. Um, a service animal is actually dictated by the Americans with Disabilities Act. So it says, um, you know, she has to, I have to be disabled and she has to do, she has to be specially trained and be able to do things that would make me be able to act as though I wasn't. I didn't have a disability. Okay. So that is what a service animal is, whether it be an emotion, you know, a, a psychiatric service animal or a physical service animal. An emotional support animal is, um, it's not dictated by a law, uh, by, you know, an Ameri the American with Disabilities Act. So it, it's a little more of a gray area. Um, it can be any, um, I hate to say anything, but anything that can help you. So actually, you know, you could have, technically you could have a bird or a snake or, you know, and it's, um, serves the purpose to calm you down emotionally. So if you have panic attacks, you know, your emotional support animal, what you can focus on your, your an emotional support animal to calm you down or like um renee you had said petting will right. actually you know release stress um so it's a little more of a gray area you also like with a service animal because it is dictated by a law mm -hmm. everybody has to allow me to be with her but with an emotional support animal, you know, call ahead and find out what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do is, is you know, the best thing I can say because it's not as clear. So it, that's also why there is a lot of confusion. You won't be able to take your emotional support snake on the plane. Yeah, right. No <laughs> snakes on the plane. No snakes on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that, when you said emotional support snake, I was just, oh my God. <laughs> I don't really. actually, I don't know anybody that has like a snake, but like birds. But, I know yeah, people have birds. You know, yeah. if that, it, it, that um, makes you happy, you know, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Any, any, any animal that i mean it's 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 looser you know the regulations are looser and that's also why i wanted to take so many classes and make that an area of expertise because it's it's very complicated you know i mean like you can't go up to somebody and say are you disabled what's wrong with you yeah so you have to know what people can say to you you have to know what your rights are and you have to yeah. know what their rights are. Um, you know, on both ends is, it's a very, um, it's a very, and, and that's also unfortunately why some people are able to take advantage of the system because you want to maintain privacy for the person who has the service or emotional support animal, but you, you know, you, you can't just have dogs that aren't trained wherever you are. I mean, that that's, it, it could potentially be dangerous. So, I mean, that I think that that's probably the biggest issue. Thank you so much for helping clear up some questions about this. And again, this is something we'll have to get you back on and talk some more about uh, later on. And like you said, you can talk for eight hours. So <laughs> we might give you a whole show a couple of months down the line and talk yeah. more about it. Uh, and, and you might learn more between now and then too. So uh, yeah, that's, that actually is very interesting that, uh, yeah. And, th and there is a, like, like Greg said, there is a fine line between, you know, emotional mm -hmm. support and, uh, and, and what you experience with a, with a service animal. Yes. Um, so we do hope that you start feeling better. Uh, you sent out some Thank pictures uh, the other day to between friends and it was just, Oh my God, my heart went out to you. It just looks so painful. Um, so again, I hope you feel better soon I, and I'm glad thank that you, you got being close to you and, uh, uh, thank you for coming on and talking about it. Thank you for having me on.
Yeah, and there's so much more to say too. That's the thing. I mean, we could just be here <laughs> forever. So I know um, we haven't even talked about crime night. <laughs> we haven't talked about crime. That's let's, right. Let's, got, let's okay, do a well, very let's, quick let's talk about that real quick. About crime night, real quick. Yeah. Well, well real, quick. real quick, crime night. Unfortunately, yes. I well, I just want to say I'm so excited that there's so many people that love it. You know, having been mm -hmm. in criminal law for so long, I you know I grew up. I always loved. Uh, loved is kind of a strange word, but, you know, I have a, an intense interest in uh, psychology and, and crime and what makes people do what, what they do in that area. Um, and so I absolutely, as you know, when I am well enough to do it, then it will be back, I promise. Um, unfortunately, for health reasons, we had to put it back on hold for right now. But, um, you know, I cannot wait to to return and you know i i miss talking to renee you know at four in the morning about it <laughs> and there's so many great topics by I the knew way it. i knew planned. she was up at four in the morning there's so many great <laughs> topics that, that she has planned she's actually been developing all the future ones you're going to see so i don't want to you know i don't want to tell them but i will say that people are going to be very excited by we the future we do episodes. we have a schedule so even though the schedule mm -hmm. is not able to be in the works right now, I mean, we have episodes laid out. I'd say we probably have like seven yes. that mm -hmm. we've done some preliminary work for. So I can't say, you know, my body's dictating to me what I do, well, but it maybe, will definitely be back. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a once a month, you know, um, I've been thinking about that. Um, yeah. it's, there's so be much, um, the biggest thing about crime night is that there's so much prep work involved because we are doing wow. documentaries, you know, every right. episode. So it's just so much, you know, Renee has um, her cool. field that, you know, she focuses on and then MM Farwell, she, you know, has her area that she focuses on. I have my area that I focus on and we make, about an hour long documentary and it's wonderful. And I'm so proud of what, you know, the three episodes that we've accomplished, but you know, when, when I'm sick like this, I pretty much am asleep 24 seven and I just can't do the prep work. Um, but yeah, every, you know, every that's one of them that went out there was so polished. There were hours and hours of pre-production, hours and hours of mm -hmm. research. And I'm really, like she said, I'm just so proud of these documentaries. There's three documentaries that are out there. I think anyone interested in the subjects that we covered, I think that we've gone to areas that other people had not explored. So you can go to um, the mm -hmm. Cosmos TV YouTube and actually just type in Crime Night and you can watch those Look three while you're waiting for the next ones. Yeah. 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 So, so hopefully... Hopefully we'll be able to do another one in, in the not too distant future. Um, we actually already know what our next our next episode is. So as soon as I have time to do it, we can't wait to get back to it. Very yes. good. Awesome. Onward and upward. We're looking forward we love to you, it. Alana. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. I love you both so much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye, sweetheart. Oh my gosh, that was wow. Wow. I just, yeah. it, it hurt me to put her in the green room, but we have Pan coming on, which is great too. We always, everyone wants to see Pan as well. They're both just amazing ladies. So do you want to bring Pan up? And again, we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll have Alana back on again soon. Oh sure. yeah, of course. Definitely. She's a uh, active member of the community. She's, yeah. yeah, she has so much to offer and she's so amazing and inspiring. Everybody in the comments is just going off. Um, I hope Ilana goes back and reads all those comments and she probably will and probably respond to all of the questions that were out there. We had more questions than we had time for, unfortunately. So there you go. Um, that's a good problem to have. Uh, our next guest is uh, becoming very well known uh, in social uh, media circles. Uh, I met her uh, last year around Thanksgiving. We did a show together, her show. Um, uh, and I'm going to bring her up now. Her name, uh, the very talented Pan Orea yes. from Canada. Yay. Hi. From Canada. Well, I'm not in Canada. Canada. I'm You're originally not in Canada. from, I'm originally from Canada, but I, I live yeah. in the United States. Right. You're in, you're in Albany. New York. Yes. New York. Yeah. New York. New York. Um, so Honorary yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> Yankas, uh, <laughs> we went, 
um, or we got together for an improv show that you were doing last year at Thanksgiving and you had me come on and play a couple of characters and you, you like to play characters. We have that in common. Yeah. So, um, uh, what, what other kid ca- I've only seen mama, uh, your, your mama Rosa. <laughs> I, I just, cr- I just created her when you came on my show. Uh-huh. Oh no, I'm alone again. <laughs> She's, oh, she's, a, she's a great yeah she's a I great forgot, i forgot this is the thing i learned this i'm so sorry yeah so last night pan and everyone should go back and watch burn it down with tom cheshire because the guest mm-hmm. last night we're getting a double dose of pan because she was on and she was like no don't solo me you know because like sometimes i do reaction shots so i just <laughs> forgot right now that's why she said that it's a little behind the scenes for everyone <laughs> i do apologize like why don't that. you like to solo <laughs> she doesn't want to solo it's all right well we yesterday i thought i lost tom yeah, because second. it looks like you're all alone floating in the in the wilderness. It's a no, man, different. I'm here. Don't worry. Um, so everybody knows Pan, of course, because she is a show host and all that. But she also has a band. And uh, this is something yeah. that I didn't even know about. And so there might be a lot of your fans that aren't aware of this. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, Pan? Apollo's Anthem. Apollo's Anthem. Yes. Yeah, so Lovely it's, name. Yes. It's basically a... Um, a band. I, I would say it's more a production team between myself and two other individuals. Mm-hmm. So it's Sandy Stewart. I don't know if you guys know him Mm-mm. from Scotland. No, he's a musician. He writes his own music, his own lyrics. Is he, he on? His... Is he on social distance fast? Uh, I'm not sure. I, mm-hmm. I I would assume so. Yes, yes. So I met Sandy, uh, he was on my show as a guest. I was interviewing him Mm -hmm. because he's a musician and he writes his own music. And I invited him on my guest, on my show as a guest and just kept a friendship. And he was coming back on my show because I also feature some uh, music events on Mondays. Not Mm -hmm. every Monday, but I try to do it as often as I can. And then um, I started dabbling with poetry. So I started writing poetry and he read one of my poems and he sent me a recording. He's like, Pan, I really loved your poem. And I just sat in front of my piano and I want you to listen to this song. So at first, when he sent me the voice message, I was like, okay, he's just leaving me a message because he's coming on my show. We're having an event. So it really took me by surprise and and so he basically took my poem, turned it into a song, and he was oh. playing. And he 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 sat in front of his piano, he recorded it. It happened very quickly. He he sent that to me, and I was blown away. And then he wanted to work with me. So wow. I said, okay, fine. We started with that song, mm-hmm. and then he's like, I want to work on more music. I want to create a band called Let's Let's find a name for it. So we were brainstorming and we came, we, we decided to go with Apollo's Anthem. I'm like, okay, fine. And then around Christmas, he's like, okay, let's let's release another song. And when I say release, it's out there. It's streaming everywhere. You can find it on Spotify. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, well, uh, we'll work on another song. He's like, let's write a Christmas song. So I wrote a Christmas song. I wrote the lyrics. And again, he did the music. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to sing it, but I got COVID, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. he ended up singing the song. So now we have two songs out there. Mm-hmm. But the story <laughs> doesn't end there. <laughs> there's a there's third an- member, right? There's a third member who who also has appeared on my show. We've developed a friendship. And me and Sandy, we asked him, you know, very casually, if, if ever he wanted to be part of this group, we would be uh, more than happy to include him in our group. And then one day, John Kampouropoulos, who's from Greece. So look at this now. We're all really? we're all from different countries. It's, distributed. Like, it's a totally diverse and distributed. <laughs> yeah, yes. Cool. He's, in, he's in Greece. And Sandy Stewart, he's in, in Scotland. And I'm in the United States. So Scotland. Yes. John is also a genius. He, 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 he writes his own music. He's a musician. He produces his own music. He's he's amazing. But when he joined the group, we really talked about our roles. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be doing what? So John, when he came in the picture, he, he's responsible to produce the music, to mix it, to master it. 
And let me tell you something. <laughs> That's good to have. <laughs> oh my God. So today, today, like I was, I was telling you, Rory, we had a meeting. So we're working on our, our third song. Again, uh-huh. it's something that I wrote, my lyrics. Mm-hmm. And I told, I told Sandy and John, the two first songs, they were ballads. They were kind of dark and sad. Mm-hmm. I said, enough with that. I want the third song to be jazzy, maybe a little bit R&B, and maybe a touch of like dance. Introdu- mm-hmm. Like make it, a, make it, even though the writing is not like, <laughs> um, my writing tends to be on the darker side for whatever reason. The lyrics are not like happy, but the song is so good and, and the music is so good that uh, the words uh, it softens the vocabulary of, let's say, the song that I wrote. Okay. And so, so the the third song that we're going to be releasing, it's with John this time. And mm-hmm. I heard what Sandy did. Oh, and before that, w- after I wrote the lyrics, I I sent them a voice message with me. Just I was on my piano. I mm-hmm. came with, uh, you know, I was just playing with the beats, and then I. I I was thinking of a melody in my head, but I'm not a musician. So I just started singing the melody. I recorded it. I sent it to Sandy and John. They loved it. Sandy started working on the music on the piano. He sent it to John. John started producing it. This thing is a hit. I'm telling you guys, this song is going to be playing in Europe in the clubs. That's how good it is. So I'm so excited. I can't say more. I'm not allowed to say more. But when we're going to release our third song... It's going to be like amazing. a banger. It's going to be a banger. So you can't tell us the title. <laughs> I can, well, I don't know if I, I don't know. Is, is Sandy here? I don't know. I know John is not watching. It's too late for him. Sometimes Sandy stays up for this. The, 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 the title of the song, I guess I could give away the title because my poetry, I usually publish it. So it's out mm-hmm. there. Okay. It's called She Keeps Looking at the Clock. Okay. Oh, that's cool. She Keeps that's Looking yeah. at the Clock. Catchy. So, <laughs> it's memorable. I think that's the, I yeah. Think that's the title. And but so anyway, so I'm very excited about Apollo's anthem. Eh? We'll okay, an Sandy said he's it. here. Yeah. Sandy said he's here and the title is fine. You can share the title. You got permission <laughs> to Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Tell them what the title is, Lars. So this <laughs> this has been so recent, you guys. It mm. it's it's not like Apollo's anthem has been out there for years. It's very recent. Mm. It's a very recent uh project. And on top of that, so not only not only are we producing music, we're also mm-hmm. producing film, short film that goes along with every song that we make. Okay. So for the two first songs, we have a, a film that goes with that. And I worked on the film. That's one of my roles. So my role is to write the music, to help with the melody, mm-hmm. to produce the film. And I also am in charge of marketing, promoting the songs, I showcase it on my show <laughs> and that's my role. And then, you know, Sandy, you know, helps also with the lyrics. He does the music and, and John's and, and he, he does the vocals too. Although I will be doing the vocals. That's the goal to get me to do the vocals. Mm-hmm. And Sandy will obviously continue to do the vocals. And John is primarily his, his role is to produce, mix and master the songs and perhaps come in with, uh, some vocals as well because he's also an amazing singer. They are both yeah, well, singers and bands, musicians. You know, you're, you've got you, everybody gets to sing a song here and there. You know, yeah. So, so yeah. I, I would love to hear John sing. Sandy has has already the two first songs that we released. It's his vocals. So yeah, we're basically we're all helping out, and it's it's exciting. It's a very exciting time for all of us, especially for me, because sounds like I you'll don't, have a whole CD together soon. Yes, so, that's yeah. the goal, to upload singles. And then when we get enough singles, who knows? Maybe we can have uh, an album. Yeah, yeah. have a there whole record. Go. It seems like yeah. this, I should have um, an album. <laughs> you, you know, the, the global pandemic was so awful, but it's, it changed everyone's lives in different ways. Some were good and some were bad. How did that change you? You're now collaborating with people all over the globe, right? You have this show. Um, it's a lot of virtual life. But mm-hmm. you, the networking is just totally different now. How did your life get impacted? Well, during COVID, I wasn't really involved in social media because I was homeschooling my daughter. So I wasn't part of the the, the big boom that happened. Mm-hmm. I was 
just very busy at home, working from home and helping out my kids. Well, my little one wasn't in school yet, but still, you know, I was a full-time mom working and, and homeschooling my daughter. Uh, when they went back to school, um, I, I felt very lonely because I was so used to having them home 24 hours a day. I mean, it was crazy for me because there was points that I was like losing it because it's like, you know, you're when you're with your kids 24 hours a day, plus you're homeschooling them. And I had my work and I had my house. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but then when they left, they went to school. I was like completely alone at home, even though I was busy. I, I was alone, so I decided to go on Facebook and just listen to people who perform live. Mm -hmm. So I would do my work and also mm -hmm. go on Facebook and say, oh, I would get a notification, so-and-so is live, and I would just follow people. And, and they were with me while I was doing my work. I didn't feel like I was alone because I work from home, okay? I'm an accountant. Mm -hmm. And I started following people, and, and I was like, you know, Where did that begin? I mean, wh which which channel were you start? Did you start out with? Was it Come Out of My House? Uh, uh, no, Mystic I Fist? think it was karaoke. Um, the karaoke. Quarantine Quarantine karaoke. Karaoke. UK. Then yeah. I made Quarantine. I made some friendships, mm -hmm. and then people started inviting me in all the groups, mm -hmm. and I would engage with the performers. I would say, "Oh wow, that's amazing! I love your voice," and that's how it started. And I had like maybe what two hundred friends, three hundred friends, because my my Facebook was new. You know, I I opened mm -hmm. it just for 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 that purpose to to make new friend uh, friends in in this type of environment. And so then after, uh, I had the idea to start my own show. <laughs> in <laughs> May like of last year, yeah. Nine months so, ago, nine months ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how did, that, how, how did that come about? I mean, what, what happened? What so snapped I, you to say, you know what, I'm going to do my own show. Okay, so it was <laughs> January, it was like the New Year's. And uh, I, I remember telling my husband, I want to start my own show online. I think I could do it. And then he's like, well, you know, what are you going to do online? I mean, you've, first of all, you, 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 you have no experience. And how are you going to just start your show and get people to come on your show? I said, that, those, are good, those are valid questions, you know. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. And he's like, well, why do you want to do this? I'm like, because I, I spent so much time getting to know all these artists. And I have all these questions. And I would like to create something where I can have a conversation with them. And it's mm -hmm. not just in the comments, because sometimes my comments, they wouldn't see them. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to start either a blog or do something in this, um, something similar to this. I, I never imagined it to be exactly like this. <laughs> I thought it would be in a smaller scale. Uh -huh. um, but then when the idea came to me, it just grew very rapidly. So I started okay. inviting people and people wanted to come on my show and then boom, boom, boom. It just grew, 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 grew. And then from, from the group, it, I've turned it into something more. It's no longer a group. It has become an actual show where I have a YouTube channel. I have my own page. Yeah, and on the mic is, is your channel, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. The live show up close on the mic is, is, is something that I created. Yes. So, I mean, you've got like all kinds of performers now on your channel. Rebecca uh, comes to mind right away. Yes. Uh, Rebecca was one time. of the people that I used to follow. And I was yeah. I was amazed by her. And I did invite her on my show, too. Yeah. And again, I didn't realize that channel was your channel until just now. Oh, you Believe didn't know that? I so when I invited you on my show, you thought I was just... I know that your, your show... Uh, well, what the show that I was on was then was an improv show. It wasn't on the uh, up close on the mic. Uh, it was an improv show, but um, I didn't realize that the channel and the show were two separate entities, but they've all belonged to you. <laughs> oh, okay. So. Yeah. So the live show up close on the mic started with the interviews, but then I added segments like my music events where, where I invite people to come on my show and perform live. I have different, uh, music events like this for example tomorrow we're we're having a tribute all about the the beatles yeah you're a huge beatles fan yes yeah, so i have performers that are scheduled to come and perform on my show 
Um, I've added other segments like poetry. You obviously night. haven't seen Troy Moore and myself do Beatles uh, tributes. We've done a couple of them now. Well, <laughs> why didn't you sign up? <laughs> I, I didn't know. I you didn't know until, it was my show. Until, yes, until yesterday, I saw when I was doing some research on you for questions for today, I saw that you had a Beatles tribute thing. Um, and I didn't know you could sign up. I didn't know I could ask you if I could yeah. be on it. You know, Every Monday, um, that's the goal. Every Monday to have an event, a music event. I'm not always okay. able to do it every Monday. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, that's the goal. And then mm -hmm. Wednesdays and Thursday, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays are dedicated for the interviews that I do. Right. And then Thursdays, now I'm adding a new segment, which is Girl the Talk. Girls. Yes. <laughs> And then I have some other segments that are, they're not on a weekly basis. I just do them when I feel like it. So for example, yeah. poetry night, improv night, when I invited you, I, I've only done one improv night and you were invited to do that mm -hmm. on my show, which you didn't even know it was my show. Wow. No, I'm no, I, I knew that was your show. The improv oh, show But you was didn't know the show. live show up close on the mic was. But I didn't know that the channel that oh. it all is on was yours. Yeah. So yeah. I know you do several shows, but I didn't realize that that channel on the mic. I'm alone. I have nobody helping me. <laughs> <laughs> so Crazy, I think right? it's amazing because, yeah, because, again, you know, you've got all these people that are performing on that on your channel now. You're frozen. Um, did I freeze? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Did I freeze? Yeah. Oh, you're back now. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Sorry. I had yes, a problem so, earlier with my phone. I went out, I, 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 it kicked me out, and I had to come back in. Uh, it yeah, the, it the live show up close on the mic is, I do everything on that show. Mm. So I produce yeah. the shows, I invite my guests, I have no one there to help me. I'm alone. Mm. So, yeah. It's, yeah it's, and, getting, and, it's, getting, it's getting to the point I, now that... <laughs> That it has, it went from something that I would do like really part time, slowly has grown into something that is more than part time. Now it's like, it's almost like I need to. <laughs> Every show that you add, yeah, you've got to, you know, you've got a whole bunch of stuff you got to do to prepare for it. Yeah, to promote it, to, to <laughs> produce know. it, to host it, to, to do all the administrative work, to invite people, to schedule, to do. It's, it's ridiculous now. I, I won't even tell you how much work I have to do for General Howitzer or for, for the Big Monster Briefing Room. It's just I know. hours and hours. And I was doing two a week for months. Hours and hours. And that's what people really? don't understand. Okay. <laughs> and that's what, you know, when I was talking to you earlier about yesterday, when we, when we come up, when we do this show and we're in, in, fr in front of an audience mm. and we know we've put so much work to it behind the scenes, the only thing that we ask is that people who are watching and commenting to show respect. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Because they, they think it's easy. They think, oh, well, look, they're on the screen. They must love the attention. And now I can say what I want. No. Because when, when you see people in front of a computer like this, they've put hours and hours of hard work. Right. Show respect. Say, you know what? I'm going to come on the show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna show respect. And I'm going to say thank you for entertaining me for I don't know how many minutes you were on and show gratitude. And if you don't like the show, get out. Don't watch it. And and, and I'm being serious right now because I'm yeah. very emotional right now. People need to realize and respect the people who put the time to do the show behind the scenes, like Renee, mm -hmm. the host, yeah. the producers, and all this. Guys, I'm being serious now. Yeah. Yeah. It is a lot of work. And again, it 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 I, I hate to say this, but we live in a time now when a lot of people are kind of like jaded and they're kind of like trolls. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. uh, I again, I have I, I do the uh, man with a thousand voices on on TikTok and every, you know, every now and again, I'll get somebody who goes, oh, you suck. <laughs> yeah, they'll, give me, they'll give me some kind of comment that, you, oh, not even close. Dude. But wait a minute. Hold on a sec. If it's somebody that doesn't know you and just happened to come across your episode and let's say that person doesn't like what you're doing and mm. said that negative comment and left or whatever. But mm. when it's part of the community, because the live show up close on the mic, which you guys don't understand, mm -hmm. I, I'm building a community 
yeah. where musicians, artists, performers can network, mm -hmm. find each other. For example, what I was just describing earlier with Apollo's anthem, I met these two individuals through my show in my group because that's the whole point. I, I encourage people to collaborate, to co-write music together. Yeah. If if you're a musician, but you can't write music and you know somebody who could write good lyrics, contact that person or vice versa. If you're a good writer, <laughs> you write poetry or lyrics, but you're not a musician, go in my group. Find those artists. Every mm -hmm. I, I'm building a, a group where people support each other, help each other out, and they have good intentions. If somebody does not have good intentions, they're out of my group. That's why my group is private. Now, the live show up close on the mic, the actual show, that's my show. I invite my guests, or if they want to come on my show, I say yes or no. And then we work together and we talk about how to promote their music. My goal is to promote them. Yeah. They come on my show so they can talk about their music. Right. You know, it's to highlight the artist, but they're part of the group, the community that I've built. And so for people to come, and watch the show with the intention of hurting me or my guest. I have zero tolerance. You don't like my show, don't watch my show. The reason why too is like what I always say is that there's there's sort of an entitlement, but our presence and our time is these are fungible goods. We're never going to get our time back, and no, our and we're not getting compensated. Thing. And we're not, we're not even getting compensated by that person. We don't work for that person. That person is not we're working. Well, on. we don't work for that specific person. Even if we're getting compensated by someone else, we're not getting compensated by that person. They're not our boss, right? No. And we only have so many minutes in the day. And unfortunately, like what you said, I'm always trying to facilitate uh, collaboration too. We need people. People. But exactly. Our presence is a privilege, not a right. It is a privilege to be here and work with somebody. And if you cannot appreciate that, then you have to go. On because there's there's the whole entertainment. We bring entertainment. People watch and they get yeah. entertained and then they, they can move on to some other form of entertainment, whatever they decide to go watch online or television. There's or whatever. infinite possibilities for them. If they so, choose for to example, be if you're annoyed. <laughs> so if there's all these options out there you watch and Press you don't Press. like what you're watching, get out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I'm being cruel right now because I'm, I'm, I, 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 because it, I'm still steaming from yesterday. You cannot watch a show and, dis and, and, and just say whatever you feel like saying in your comments because you're in your home and you think you have that um, privilege. You don't. And if you don't like what you're watching, there's thousands of other shows that you can go watch. Go find something else. Show respect. Encourage the people who are doing this. For They're not even getting compensated. And what we're doing right now is helping a community. We want to lift people up. We want to support other artists. And if you can't do that, then don't be part of this group. Go somewhere else. See, this is something I talk about all the That's time. That's how I and... feel. And I'm mad now. You see, this right. is this is important, you know? <laughs> it is important. And She's I riled up, folks. She's riled up. Yeah. yeah. I think about this, too. Let me say this, though. I talk about She's this all the time, it. too, because what She's I want to know is, it, do you think, and, and with, there's no right answer here. I don't, I don't know. Do you think that some of this is that the buffer of social media and the virtual lifestyle means that people can be overly rude and not understand like would they come up to us in the grocery store and talk like that they, to us if we were on a theater stage would they i'm confused because it seems like there's a lot of animosity and people are very blunt and rude in a way that i don't remember like in physical life so i'm not sure if maybe people no they would never them. say that in your face they would never say that in your face are you kidding me i don't know i'm seeing videos right. on on social media showing people just being extremely rude and and obnoxious out in public yeah. um, it's it's so yeah. it's so difficult to do what we're doing to get the courage to sit in front of your 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 computer and talk mm -hmm. to people to interview them and and show respect to your guests and want to mm -hmm. make them look good and shine and then you go and you look at the comments and boof there's somebody there like destroying the whole mood yeah I, zero tolerance yeah, for that yeah, yeah. They want the attention for themselves because they're not going through the work to get on stage and to do all of this work that we're yeah. doing, right? So to yeah. them, this well, it's is just their like way doing of... comedy and you get a heckler and then the heckler will come up after the show, go, hey, I helped you out on stage there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I'm just. I'm just venting today because no, this is. This, this happened yesterday and I'm, I'm very, very upset. 
and I don't think it's right. And I'm not afraid to speak my mind, as you guys know. And, you know, like the, the my show, like I said, you know, it's about helping people, supporting people. And it's a choice. You don't want to be there. Don't be on my show. Don't watch my show. Leave my group. It's as simple as that. Because I put so many, so much hard work and time to, mm -hmm. to create something, to grow, to grow a community. Yeah, again, I'm who hoping, that negativity? You know. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, like, just move on. Go go do something else if you're not happy uh, with the show. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and watching. It is the attention and the jealousy, too. And I think that, um, you know, mm. it's almost like an assassin can't be as big as the person they assassinate. So they want their name in the history books. And the only thing that they can think of, of doing is assassinating. Them. We have assass we have their assassinators, too, right? Assassins. Yeah. There are people who... They're not on screen. They get jealous. They get bored and they just feel like, you know what? If I start some shit, suddenly now all of these people are going to be paying attention to me. They don't want to go and do the work. You want to actually stand Colin. up here and put yourself out here and being vulnerable. Like that's a very vulnerable position. What we're yeah, doing that's time. the thing. You're nervous. You're vulnerable. You're, you're, you're trying to do an interview with someone or, uh, or you're, mm. you're being interviewed. And so it's more like, how dare you, you know, how dare mm. you? And so that's why, you know, I have so much respect for you guys, you know, Cosmos and other people who do the same type of um, entertainment, for example, which is online. Because, yes, yes, there's a lot of uh, pressure to do a good job. And, you know, you, you, there's certain things you need to do. So, you, you know, but think about like the moment that you're in front of the, the camera. Anything could happen live, right? Like anything could go wrong. Like, look at me now. <laughs> I'm probably going to regret all this. <laughs> I'm probably going to say, what did I just say? But you know what? This is how I feel right now. And so let the whole world hear me. What, you know, it is what it is. Um, this is live. This is how I feel, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and now this is the truth. It's coming out. Yeah. And maybe I'll regret it. But that, that's, the, that's when, when you go live. That's what happens when you live stream. Anything could happen. So That's for why people, people to, like it, they tune in because for the any, veracity yes, because it's real, yes. it's authentic. It's authentic. And when I do my show, I, I'm calm. I'm calm and I calm and I keep it together. Today I'm a guest, so I can say what I want. <laughs> Today I can. <laughs> well, when I'm on somebody else's show, look out. Well, when I'm on also, somebody else's show. <laughs> but there's, there's, a, um, there's also a bit of I'm a glad you got to vent a little bit. That's, that's kind of uh, yeah, cool. Because, because there's a misogynistic <laughs> angle here, too. I think women do get the brunt of it. The way we look, it's yeah. scrutinized. Our attitude, if we... Like, she had to apologize. She felt this societal need right now to apologize for having emotions when I don't see men feeling like they have to do that. But I do that, too. If I start to feel angry, I immediately apologize. It's like, I got to... You know, and, and I just want to say... Look, if somebody is doing something that is offensive, it's okay to feel that anger and to talk about it. I don't know why that's, you know, but as a woman, I feel like we get brought back a little bit. And uh, it's just this makes we, good TV. It makes good TV. And it's more interesting. Rory's laughing. Rory's right. like, I love this. This is great, Tan. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> yes. And, uh, we got her to crack. We got her to crack. She's always like calm. She is pissed together. Off. This is great. She's always professional. She's always she always looks like she's together. I'm a human. I have emotions. And when I do my show, yes, I keep it together because that's my responsibility. I have to keep it together. I have to be professional. I have to make my guests feel comfortable. I'm doing a show. It's important. But what people don't realize is that I'm human. And we are all human. And what we're doing takes a lot of guts. So show respect when you come and watch our show. Say nice things. And if you have nothing nice to say, go do something else. That's it. That's it. There you go. We need to have that as the there mission statement for all of our different communities. <laughs> Just, I think we do. I think we do. I think that that's the thing. Is it, Now you're going to see all my viewers. I'm losing yeah. viewers now. Boom, boom, no. boom. Oh, no, you they, think they, I care? No, I don't. You for speaking your mind. They they I don't care. You, you right cut out viewers. those bad apples, man. You got good, you got good programming. You want the right viewers. It's not about quantity. It's quality. You need the right people to be around you and yeah. the right mm. people and collaborate with the right people. There's 8 billion people on the fucking planet is my attitude. So I, yeah. I'm not going to spend time with people who are not worth my time. You know, yeah. it's not worth yeah. it. Same here. Yeah.
I yeah. see Ilana back. Rock- can you bring uh, Ilana? Are you ready to come? Yes, back on? Rocky's Maybe coming out. Do you see Rocky now? This is Rocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ilana, do you want to come back on? Just you're gonna, wait you're gonna if, eat. If you're ready to come back. Thunder, on. then you're gonna. Okay, she's ready to come back on. I can be Mickey now. You know, my whole theme this year is to be like Rocky, meaning if I get punched, I'm going to get up. So people who people who are going to be rude with me or my guests, the people that I actually take the time to invite on my show, if you hurt any of my guests, you're 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 gone. You're out of my group and you're out of my show and you're I'm never I never want to see you again. Because my guests are my family. They come on my show, I treat them like royalty. I treat them like my family. If you come on my show and you do all this, you're like a disturber, you're out. Rocky says out. That's you know, Pan, you said that... Oh, I'm sorry. You said that you were going to lose viewers out of this. Well, those aren't the viewers that you want anyway. I mean, no. I want us to lose those viewers. So you go. <laughs> Sanity and surrender. Yeah, none of us want those viewers. No, no, we don't want those viewers. There's a reason why they're popping off like that, and they might be hurting in their own life. And I feel bad about that, but um, it's not our place to, uh, you know, get involved with that. It's just gone, you know. Yeah. Get whoever yeah. we want, we're not hurting them. Riling we're- us up is not going to solve your problems, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it, you no, see? I did it on live streaming on Cosmos. You see? Lift it off your shoulders. So I've been I've been doing this for nine months. I never cracked. Now you see I cracked. No, I you don't didn't. I would not say you the crack now. Mind. I wanted to say that late. I wanted to say that earlier, and I want Alana also to weigh in on this. When you said earlier, like usually you keep it together and all that, and I'm like, why is it that we can't be keeping it together while being authentic in the fact that we feel no i mean i'm keeping it together so my so i can have control of my show the way it goes from start to finish so and it's all about my guests so i I can't start venting when i have a a guest on (laughs) i want to make i I want to make my show fun and pleasant so when they come on my show we can have a good time they they're going to want to come back they can say Oh, you know, I've been to Pan's show and it was amazing. And they can share the stream. They can share my YouTube episode with their fans. And so, you know, it's about always keeping it positive and, and encouraging everyone in the community. And, and, and that's the whole message. Today is different. Today is about the people who do the complete opposite, who think they can get away with it, but yeah. they will not get away with it anymore because on my show, they're gone. That's you know it. what though? That's it. I, no tolerance. So Zero. I think none. That there's a positive way that so like <laughs> I've opened Crime Night before with notes. And I think that it is completely um right of you to say what you're saying and say it at the beginning of the show in, you know, maybe a briefer way because it's at the beginning of our show and we don't want to take away from those guests. But I mean, I think it needs to be said. I think it's important. I think also that, you know, I I mean, I have to say as a woman, I, I want to get mad. I do get mad. Like, I mean, I've been in kind of a bubble where I've been allowed to get mad because (laughs) I was, (laughs) I was a criminal defense attorney for a while, you know, so you can and get I, mad. And I'm, and I'm an accountant and I used to be an oh. auditor. So I, <laughs> I used to I audit think, people. That's what I used to do. So, but so I mean, is, I think that there's a positive way to do it in a way that you can get it across without ruining the rest of the show or, you know, you mean I, on I don't my know. Show? I, or any show. I mean, I'm just saying that I think, like, I, I do, of course, feel that as women, we're not allowed to get angry. And I do feel like we're supposed to fit into a box where we're supposed to act a certain way. And we're under intense scrutiny at all times. I absolutely get that. But at the same time, I mean, and it's probably harder. Um, but for me personally, I force myself to do that and to get mad in public because I want other people to see that that's going to happen. I mean, in 
And I'm sure being an accountant is, you know, there are, being a lawyer is a male dominated field. So, I mean, you know, I imagine that being an accountant is also a male dominated field. You know, but you, you know something, you know something when I'm in, when I'm doing my work, when, even when I was much younger and I was an auditor and I was out there in the field doing my work, I never encountered this type of bullying. I would go somewhere as an auditor or as an accountant and people would greet me and they had, there was a level of respect. It was a business relationship. Come in, I would do my service and I would leave. When you're on, when you're, when you're doing a show, for example, it's different. The way people treat you is different. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not the same. I'm not saying I've never encountered problems with men when, when it came to my work. I'm, I'm not saying that. But I was not bullied like the way I get bullied with my show when I get harassed, when I get messages, when, when people send me messages, horrible messages, private mm -hmm. messages and pictures. I went through a lot starting my show. So, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the viewers who show no respect. I, I, still, I have no tolerance for that anymore because... And, and I don't think that you should. I'm just saying that as women, I don't think that we should be apologizing. I think that people see us apologizing and then yeah. they apologize. Did I, I apologize? Did we I apologize? Have to, no, but just in general. I mean, that's what yeah. the topic that we're discussing is that yeah. as women, we feel, and I feel that, burden to to apologize when you get angry but Actually, i refuse to apologize bit. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> just a little I, bit i i have so much respect for people who do this and even if, even even if it wasn't my show because this did not happen on my show but even but even if i'm watching another person's show and i see this type of behavior i don't like it i don't like it yeah, the way I think about it is I think about it like this is our house. So we're building something, right? If you have a show, you built it. Just because it's virtual, it's not brick and mortar. This is our house. We don't admit everybody into our house. If somebody is being a total asshole at the door of our house, we do not let them in. We don't grant access. And it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't have any guilt about saying this is my space. These are my boundaries. And if you're not complying with my space, I don't go into your space and do it. So just yeah. please give me that and, space. And, you know? and again, it's, totally it's about a choice. Like what, what Rory was saying, there's so many other things that uh, somebody could do to find entertainment. Definitely. So if you're coming to watch something that's a show that is streaming and you're there and you could be doing something else, reading a book, watching television, I don't know, watch another stream, then be nice. Be nice. Because if you're not nice... Agree. But this yeah. is something, oh, it could also be honestly, because I look very young. So I, in a year, I'm going to be 50. And like, I've been treated like I was 15 my whole life. <laughs> and so for me personally, no matter what I do, I have to say what I think at the moment that I think it because otherwise it's very easy for people to think they can run over me. I've been asked if I was my own secretary <laughs> so many times. I've had to dress like a lawyer so that people think that I'm a lawyer, even though I have documentation, I shouldn't have to do anything. So I'm, I'm just saying that this, what, this is a problem and this is a problem it always, I mean, and, and it's different places. Of course, it needs to be handled in different ways. But I, I feel like, A, people watch us more. Being female, we are definitely under more scrutiny. B, we have a show, so we're putting ourselves out there. C, people really should have a certain level of decorum. Absolutely, they should have a certain level of decorum. And I don't want to be like, oh, I'm so old and back in the day, you know, but I feel, I do feel like that. I mean, I do feel like it's gotten worse, but I feel at the same time, you know, for every day of my life, 
I have heard, oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're a lawyer. You're going to be my lawyer. Oh, that's so awesome. I didn't know lawyers could be pretty. Like, would you ever say that to a man? No, you would never say that to a man. Mm. So I just, I, I just want us all as women to start thinking about when you're upset, say it. You're not cracking. You know, you, you're not cracking. You have a feeling, you know, if a guy said what you said, it would be fine. Nobody would be like, oh, that person cracked under the pressure and they're so mad and they're venting. Like you're not venting. You're not cracking. You know, somebody did something that was not appropriate to hurt you and to hurt, you know, somebody who show you were on. And I just like to make a habit in it, my own life. I can I, I can play I can play devil's that. advocate. Sorry to interrupt. I can play devil's advocate and say maybe that person was tired. Maybe that person was under the influence. Whatever the case may be. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Respect. It doesn't respect. matter because like we just talked about earlier, there's so much work that, that we put in to, to create a show. So people could come and watch for, the, for those 30 minutes or an hour or even whatever. That's time away from my life. I have a family. I have kids. I have a husband. I could be I could be spending my time with my kids. Like yesterday I could have been helping my daughter with her music which I ended up doing after the show, helping her with her piano lessons because she had she had a, a lesson today and I, she had to prepare her songs and I did that after the show. So I'm taking away time from my family, my husband, my kids to appear on somebody else's show because I was invited and I wanted to be on my best and, and make the person feel good too, and vice versa. And then I don't care where your mindset is. If you know you're, you're watching the show and these two people are meeting for the first time and it's an interview, you show respect and you don't cross the line. Because if you do, you're out. And I Absolutely. blocked that person. That person is blocked. And, I, and I'm going to continue that way. If anybody intentionally tries to sabotage a show that people put time and effort to plan and organize and take away their personal time from their families to come and entertain people on the internet you better believe it i'm gonna block you and i never want to see you again never never and yeah. people need that's how i feel unfortunately people need to be told to be respectful and it's it's not people should just know it's not mm -hmm. our job you know and and i absolutely am glad that we're having this discussion because because it is important because people should not feel and like renee said i think they see a woman you know in my case they see a woman who looks very young especially i don't have the option of you know i unfortunately with my illness wearing clothes is a very difficult thing. So I don't even have the option of wearing a suit today. You know, I don't have the option of getting lawyerified or whatever, you know? So people should just know though, like I shouldn't, I, I should be respected. I shouldn't have to open my mouth and let people know that I'm, you know, however old I am because of the way I speak, because of my confidence, because of whatever, yeah. you know, people should, yeah, I, I'm all but for like for blocking them, definitely. For, ex for example, I'm not looking at the comments now, but, you know, I know Renee did so much work to plan this episode. Rory, we're all here together. We're taking time away from our personal lives to do something for other people. We're not getting compensated. No one's paying us to do this. We're doing it because we have good intentions, because we're, we, we want to build a community. Eventually, perhaps, we maybe one day we'll monetize from this. That would be awesome. But in, in the moment right now, we're, we're doing it because we have passion for it. It's our passion. And I'm not talking about people who write jokes in the comments. There's, I know there's a lot of, you know, 
you know, uh, no, that's in good fun. We, we can tell good the fun difference humor. between an I'm not attack talking, and somebody. I'm yeah. not talking about humor because I'm funny and I, I've done it myself where I say jokes and sometimes people can go a little bit crazy in the comments, but it's all good and fun. You know, it's, it's fun humor. Absolutely. It's not malicious. I'm talking about being purposely malicious and hurtful and you know you're doing it because then you're apologizing for it because you don't want to, you don't want you don't want to be removed from the community afterwards. Guess what? Too bad. You lost that privilege. You know? Get Why out. would we possibly keep you? Like, that's just like unreal yeah. to me. Yeah. So of again, people need to, they, they have to understand. We're yeah. not talking about the humor because I do that too. I, I, I'll i say a joke and, you know, sometimes maybe I'll, I'll say it and maybe somebody will misinterpret it. But, you know, it's 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 cute and it's like we... We apologize on the moment and people see that you see the intention. But when it's when it's specific and it's there to to hurt yeah. and to to make the other person feel small, you make somebody feel small. There you're I am. leaving. <laughs> Rory. Rory got disconnected. Internet. <laughs> Rory got so scared. Sorry He's like, I'm away. leaving. <laughs> No, I, you know, and I was thinking, oh my God, they think I probably left because I'm a man. <laughs> I did. You know, For a split about, yeah. second, I did think that. I was like, well, we ran him out. There was too much estrogen for him. No, and he, and he, the, the darn yeah. internet went right yeah, out, yeah, yeah. you know, at the, the hour and 15 minute mark. So, yeah, yeah I think, <laughs> I, I think we scared you. No, nah, I'm, oh, I wouldn't we, have come back if you had. Rory, I promise I'll be it's nice when you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when you come on my show for their next improv night, you'll get the nice pan. You won't get this angry pan. <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like the round up pan. Both pans are yeah? great. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I think this is great. <laughs> this is. I just, okay. watched, oh. I just watched an interview with an actress. I, I, I'm sorry, Rory. I just wanted to say this. It's so interesting. It's so ironic mm. because I was thinking about doing a panel show about women not being able to talk about their rage because I saw this actress being interviewed and she was talking about how there was a scene that, she, you know, the, the movie written by a man, of course, directed by a man. Her co-star was a man. And they had this scene where she was supposed to get angry and just be kind of like mousy about it. And she came to the director and she said, I'm sorry women have been told this over and over and over again, that when you're angry, you're supposed to internalize it. And she said, if you want to be authentic, let me get enraged. And uh, the director said, let's see what you got. And they ended up keeping that part because she just went all out. And if a man considered so cool and masculine and tough, and you're a leader, you're a hero, if a woman does it, it's like, you're a bitch, you're yeah. on, you know, you're, you're crazy, what, you're a psycho girl, that kind of thing. You know, you know I want you, on, so I like want you both on my show. Girl. The group yeah, talk. Let's talk yeah, about this. Yeah. About this. She's, this is all about what she's going to be doing on Thursdays. <laughs> it was, it was all a setup. It was, it's all a setup. This was just one big. It's all a setup. Oh my god! No, 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 no. I was invited to the girl talk episode. I want to go, go vent and have girl talk. Too. This was all an act. For my girl talk. No, no. <laughs> this was just an ad. There's going to be a jingle at the end of this. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. brilliant. Brilliant. I'm not that brilliant. I wish I was. But no, it's starting actually. It's this week, Thursday, 12, um, 12 p.m. Eastern time. It's called Girl Talk and the City. I'm bringing four wonderful women. We're going to be talking about different topics that concern women. I'm not going to give the topics away. I mean, yeah. I'm, I haven't even told them yet what the topics are. I'm, I'm going to tell them, though, in advance so they'll have an idea. Um, but yeah, so... Sounds wonderful. If you ever need somebody, not to invite myself on your show. But no, you I would... Are that, you kidding me? Your <laughs> you're my girl. Renee's my girl. You're all my girls. And you're going to come on my show? Rory's but... not your girl. I'm just Rory. not to do drag on shows not. that no. have... No, Rory will run, will run away. <laughs> or Sandy D. You know, I'm thinking about maybe having the same concept, but for men, but I would need a host. Rory. <laughs> there he is. You're looking at him. Look at him. There he is. No pressure. I'm just, I, I was just joking about show. that. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel got very famous from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so my show is all about uh, serious topics. Like what we just had today. It's going to get hot. It's going to get steamy. I want these women to open up. I want them to really speak their mind. And the people who are going to watch the show, even men who are going to watch the show, maybe they can learn 
from from watching the show. Maybe they can learn something. Maybe men can can learn how to deal with powerful women and or how women, women think being, how women actually think when we're not yeah. sort of. Uh, just drawing back all the time because a lot of men get very intimidated by women who are being mm -hmm. authentic. And that's, a, yeah. that's something mm -hmm. that we have to work through as a society. Sometimes so I think it's, it's all about you're fighting, some men being cosmopolitan terrified. for the same reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the show is good. Tricks. The show, it's you know, all I about do want women. to say one thing is that like, being a woman who loves confrontation and like, I don't actively seek it. Like I'm not trying to like fight with everybody I see, but I do like, confrontation i mean why do you go be a trial lawyer then you like confrontation you know i feel totally comfortable with it i want people to be real with me and i want to be able to be real with them i i think that this is great and i, I think that this is something that unfortunately we you know we have to talk about but thank yeah. you for doing so well thank my you. show yeah. is going to be about allowing giving women a voice so the whole idea be behind Girl Talk is, you know, when you get together with your girlfriends and we you, we talk openly and no one's listening to us, it's it's like mm -hmm. kind of like Sex and the City. Remember those four women? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone has watched the show. Yes. And you see the way they would talk and everyone had a different personality. And yeah. all the characters on that show had a different education, had a different background. Um, and, and, and so it was so interesting to watch that show. I used to watch it and I had that idea where I could replicate it, but on a show where I can bring women from different backgrounds, from different ages, from different cultures and give them a voice when I highlight different topics that matter to us women mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity to be honest. And then maybe people who watch the show could give comments or questions and I can I can bring those questions on the show and the comments and I'm hoping that the comments are going to be positive and encouraging because if I get this negativity my show is going to stop there these women will, will not want to come back I will not be able to get more women on my show and I do not want that I want people to give women a voice to allow women to keep coming on my show and talk about many topics of conversation that makes yeah. sense. I think yeah. it does, right? Sounds like a yeah, great show. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah. That and I want you I want you both to come on my show. I'm there. Sorry, Rory. <laughs> I'll watch. I'm there. I'm there. I will. I'll watch. Rory will be in the notes. audience. He'll be he'll I'll be very notes. well behaved in the audience, I promise you. He'll be very supportive. <laughs> yeah. he'll be oh, you you, you know you know I'm your number one fan, Rory. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say so. Uh Tom Cheshire is gonna be very proud of me because we went an hour and twenty seven minutes. We went twenty seven minutes over time. So we did it for you, Tom. Uh, we did it for you. It's gonna be thirty minutes by the time we end. It's uh, the longest it's <laughs> casual we've ever done. And it was a great you bring premiere. me on the yeah. show i don't leave i stay well, i know i was gonna say yeah, you know I can, talk can talk for eight hours, for eight hours. <laughs> I, I can talk for eight hours too let's <laughs> an hour and 20 what minutes because i've had more than that <laughs> yeah the easy easiest cake yeah uh, I, I will not go back and watch this especially today's episode oh no, <laughs> you no you um the, the, it's a first for me where i i i you know, I let, I let it go. All my feelings. I think open. it's awesome. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're cheering you on. Yeah, no I doubt. Again, the negativity and the, the trolling. Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need no. that in our lives. We've got uh, so much other good stuff going on in our lives with the people that we, we know are going to be nice to us, our friends and our colleagues who, you know, come on these shows. So again, I want to thank you both for coming on my show. Um, <laughs> And uh, again, because we have Renee here, yeah, we, we have the, the feminine touch. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your, your girl show, the girl mm -hmm. talk. Thursday, and, 12 p.m. Uh, there's, there's a couple of other shows. Diane, uh, uh, Diane Marie Call had one, Empowered by Women, that she was mm -hmm. doing. Uh, yes, and women, we have women, Orchid that. Times. Uh, and Orchid Times, Times is yeah, Lily May and Linda Rose on Untard on Media, and they, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, they they are pan. Let me say, they just tackle the most controversial topics. They don't shy away from every anything. They are total pros. They don't flinch, and they're both 15 years old. And they started this when they were 14 years old. 
So Incredible. I'm learning. Yep. So I should invite them. them on my show. You absolutely you should. should. And amazing. highlight them and give them a voice they're on amazing. my show. Yes, you should. You should. They, yeah. they they're are very the talented. Best they're amazing ever. girls. They are yeah. so brave, too. We did. I did an episode with them about when Roe versus Wade was overturned. Yeah. It was, I was kind of nervous, to be honest. They're and, very And, you know, we, they crushed it. Yeah, and that's I believe a hard topic it. I've for seen anybody to talk about. And they're very talented too. On top of that, very Absolutely. talented. Yes, they're also talented in their own right outside of the show, of course. Definitely. Outside of the so show, yes. Have them on your show, and you will learn so much from them, yeah. which is like a you will. an amazing thing because, um, and also to show the different generations. You know, they're fifteen yeah. years old, and and I feel like we can learn from. It gave me a lot. It gives me a lot of hope to work with them because I feel like. Sometimes I worry about the world and I worry, what is the next generation going to be like? The world is going to be fine because these ladies are going to start taking charge yeah, and it's absolutely. a different world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope so. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be better Let's with them so. in charge. Trust me. No one's going to give away. Yeah. Like, what we're doing now, they can do at times 100 and they'll just come out. They No apologies. They just take charge and uh, fair, compassionate, intelligent with young women. Just yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Working times, everybody. <laughs> and, yes, and much awesome. love to you both again for coming and helping us bring it's casual back after a long hiatus that's uh, such an honor uh, thank you for yeah, inviting us so this was a great first, first episode of the third season um and uh wow yeah much thank much, you we came right out the gate didn't we? we came out swinging be, so we came out swinging no one anticipated i was rocky this. tonight so people know that rocky <laughs> when i talk <laughs> about roger <laughs> Yes. I am the tiger. Oh yeah. 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 It's all yeah, about yeah. Rocky this year. <laughs> this is the Rocky year. No. A theme song. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So funny, guys. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, all everybody. everybody. Love everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for watching, everybody. No trolls. Bye. No trolls. We are. The trolls are all scared. They all scattered. I, I scared them away, man. They're never coming back. <laughs> Overnight is out. <laughs>